Hello YouTube, this is Noah, and welcome to my garage. Um, this is actually part two of my disassembly and replacement of a throw bearing and my 1996 Ford Escort. Um, it's getting very cold up here in uh, Pennsylvania. It's about like 26 degrees in here, so <laughs> I hate the cold. So this is going to be a very quick video. Um, my hands are freezing right now. Uh, so I'll, I won't be as interactive or showing that much to replace everything and taking everything apart. I just want to get it done. And sh you know, the car is going outside. Hopefully it doesn't snow by then. Um, so I can move my truck over and do some more projects. Um, that will be more in depth into um, fixing stuff. Um, so hopefully you enjoy these videos. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, All right, with the green disconnect tool in, it just snaps on. You press down and pull the line from down below. And there's a little gas left over in it. And it pops right out. Do the red one. Press in. Get the other paint that quick disconnect. So you have gas lines all the way. Um, other things I disconnected was the rear O2 sensor. That's that green wire down here. Um, I'm trying to think what other wires they disconnected. Um, the main harness. Um, these two lines. The one's for the fuel injectors. The other one, I believe, go to... Um, I think the oil pressure sensor. And... A couple other odd sensors. Um, usually I just put them out of the way. Tuck the engine harness from the engine bay over. Same thing with the fuel lines. Check them out of the way so they don't get caught while pulling on the engine. Um, I still have to disconnect the radiator hoses and the heater core hoses too. Um, I'll be moving, removing this motor mount. There's a couple bolts that take this top bracket out. And then below it is two more bolts. And then one major bolt that goes through. There's this motor mount. There's one that was underneath the battery. I'll have to take the battery tray off. There's one up front underneath. And then one in the back that go to the transmission. Uh, I have the front one disconnected. I still have to do the rear and that one. Uh, once I get my chain hoist up to actually pull the engine up, I'll disconnect both upper uh, motor mounts so the motor doesn't drop down. Usually I just use a floor jack with a piece of plywood or a piece of wood underneath the oil pan. Just be careful uh, just to hold up the engine. Um, to disconnect the radiator, usually there's a spigot underneath. I'll have to go from underneath to show you how to drain it. Um, all the other fluids, um, if it was an automatic transmission, there'll be transmission lines going from transmission to either a radiator or a, a separate radiator cooler. Um, luckily, this one doesn't have one, so it's easier to remove. This vehicle is actually really nice to take out engines. I've had it out a few times for uh, many different uh, problems. Um, when I had it before, the top end decided to go. I think it had like around 190,000 miles. The valve seat dropped, destroyed number four cylinder. It put a hole through the piston. It still ran, but it ran horribly. So I had to get a new top end, new bottom end. Um, it has like 100 or it has like 240,000 miles on this junkyard engine. It still runs pretty good um, a couple years ago the transmission I had to take everything back out 
This is a junkyard transmission also. I lost fifth gear a while back. Um, I was on the highway, fifth gear popped out, so I had to push it back in. And all of a sudden, fifth gear wasn't there, so I had to drive around for fourth gear, which I couldn't go fast on the highways with it. And then threw in junkyard transmission, drove for a few years, and then now I should replace the bearings inside here, the throw bearing and the pilot bearing. I was too cheap and into a hurry. Um, all the things I disconnected was the coil pack, the ground, uh, ground off the transmission. There's a small one that clips in. Uh, evap lines. Uh, just remember where to put them. Usually I label them uh, to see where they go. There's a huge harness here. I'll have to cut all my zip ties off and move it out of the way. Uh, take this uh, battery plate out. Uh, a couple of bolts are already missing or broken. Uh, it was just held down the best they could. Uh, vacuum boosters disconnected off the manifold. Um, once I take the radiator out, I'll take the exhaust manifold or disconnect the catalytic converter off of it, which is a lot easier to get to the motor mounts and disconnect everything from it. Okay, on the other side I already have taken apart. Um, it's very tight because the truck's on the other side. On um, this side I'll show you how to take it or uh, disassemble it. Um, with the caliper, there is two 15 millimeter uh, bolts they just slide right out to hold the caliper to the knuckle. Usually I put them up with a uh, bungee cord out of the way. I already took the brake hose off. I'll be removing these two 17 millimeter bolts uh, the spindle away from the strut. I'll be taking there's a cotter pin if I can get a cotter pin and castle nut on the outer tie rod end I'll be taking apart too knocking the outer tie rod away from the knuckle um, the axle bolt I think it's a 32 millimeter uh, usually it's a one-time use bolt usually you have to pinch them to lock them in place uh, you'll remove that knock the axle through once you move these two bolts and the outer tie rod, the whole knuckle will swivel down and you can actually access and move, remove the axle from the spindle and then I'll show you how to pop it out from the transmission side. Um, with these two bolts, I highly recommend alignments after doing any suspension work. Um, some imports, I believe Subaru I think some Toyotas, there's a cam kit uh, or an oblong bolt that goes on the top or either at the bottom. Uh, usually I'll scribe a line where the strut meets the spindle to put it back in place where it's supposed to be. If not, some are pressed in to actually self-align the spindle to the strut to give you the camber. Um, some, if I describe it correctly, or there's a tool that is a bubble leveler that magnets to the rotor that you can see where it is, take a mark, and when you reassemble it, put that bubble where it's supposed to be so it's from where it used to be. But some have cam kits. I'll mark on the bolt what side is facing out to bring either camber in or out. Um, Aftermarket, if it does need uh, readjusted, if for alignments, there's aftermarket kits that you can replace to bring the camera in and out. Or aftermarket struts have a slot in the top and bottom that you can actually manually slide it in and out for uh, positive and negative camber. Um,
Without, with the CV axle out, you can either, usually I just use a pry bar. You can go from underneath, but the car's so low I can't get a pry bar between the trans or transmission and the axle. So you can actually go on top. You can see that's the end of the CV axle that goes into the transmission. When I have the other side pulled, with these out, you don't want to... Uh, twist them at all. There's actually spider gears. I believe that's what they're called inside. If with these CV axles out, the spider gears can slip and mess up inside the transmission, which you can't get the axles back in. Usually you have to take the transfer case, or just, the transmission apart, and uh, reset them, put everything back together. But I have it in neutral. I would try not to spin the axle. Usually take a long pry bar. If I can get it down there. Uh, there's a seal that you don't want to damage. Usually I put the pry bar in between the transmission and the CV axle and pry out. There's a C-clip that holds them in. These ones are actually brand new, which are a pain to get back out. But usually they pop right out. How can I switch my hands? So we can pop it right out. That's the C clip that usually holds them in place. Usually, sometimes they're a pain to get out. Usually, you just have to 
wedge the pry bar. There's a special tool to get uh, them out. Usually I just use a pry bar and pop them right out. Um, if for a couple years old, this one still kind of looks newer. With the axle out, or CV shaft out, I see a little damage to the seal. Uh, you can see it's been leaking for a little bit uh, on the end of the casing. Uh, usually if I do that and I see it leaking while everything is apart, I'll throw a new seal. It's only a couple bucks uh, insurance to throw it back together without it leaking any uh, transmission fluid everywhere. Um, for now, just to leave it as is, my own car. Uh, it's going to be sitting outside, pumping out on the road for a while. So I'll probably be replacing that later on.